hi and welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking of my about my five top tips of essential items that you need to sew so this is really good for beginner sewers if you're just starting out these are the essentials that be really good for you to get um, and it's also good for if you're an experienced sewer perhaps some of the tools I'm going to talk about today you don't have in your kit but you might think that's really good I'll, I could do with one of those and let's face it you can never have enough kit for sewing so I'm going to start talking today about rotary cutter scissors cutting mats rulers and iron they're my five top essential items that I couldn't manage without so this is for people who general sewers um, quilters bag makers toy makers any sort of general sewing that you would need so I'll start talking about those and then I'm going to go on to a few different other bits that I are nice to have so let's look at the rotary cutter I've got two different types of rotary cutter hit cutters here this one is a Fiskars 45 millimeter and I use this as my general rotary cutter so when I'm cutting large amounts of fabric in terms of length and size then I would use this one because it's got the bigger blade the 45 millimeter blade and the way this works is you flick that switch and then it makes that so the sharp end of the rotary blade is open and then obviously remember for safety pull that back when you've stopped cutting so that's how that works it's got a nice soft handle as well it just protects your fingers the smaller one this is my 28 millimeter one I, I find this is a bit easier to handle, especially if you're doing more intricate, more detailed cutting, going around circles, um, or if you're using the um, shaped grid, so a hexagon shaped grid or a triangle shaped ruler, um, that's really good because you can just carefully cut around those corners. So that's the smaller one, the 28mm one. So they're the rotary cutters that I have. It's always important to mention as well, when you're using scissors or rotary cutters for cutting fabric, don't use those um, items to cut paper because the paper will blunt the scissors. And when you're cutting fabric, you want them as sharp as they can be. So keep your scissors that you use for paper. I've got these ones, I know it's these because they're my red ones. They are the ones I use to cut paper. So as you can see, I collect scissors. I love scissors, all kinds of nice, nice fancy scissors as well as the practical ones. And these are my absolute, I'm just wiping them because they're just, they've got fabric lint in them because they are, I use these every single day. So they're the big sheer type scissors. Uh, they can cut big lengths of fabric and they're also sharp to the point so that you can really, if you're just cutting into corners when you're, um, say if you're doing the corner of something, uh, I make the Maddie rag dolls when you're cutting around the corners of her face inside when you when you've cut sewn the seam, you just cut it into those seams to make sure it's a nice soft edge around when you turn it out. Those scissors are really sharp to the point, so they're my absolute go-to scissors. But in terms of scissors, there's lots of different ones and they have different purposes. But I'll come back to those in a second um rulers and mats so this is my small um mat cutting mat and i was talking about this yesterday actually um talking to somebody um a nurse about converting weights and measurements and we were talking about kilograms and stones and how whether you're talking in what terms metric or decimalization or whatever and i was taught at school centimetres and that's how I think of things I know what 10 centimetres is I know what a, a 15 centimetre ruler looks like or whatever but actually for sewing and a lot of sewers will I'm sure will relate to this we're talking inches now these boards are really good for that because this on this one um, this side is your centimetres and millimetres so if that's your preferred method of, of what you use then you use that side but you probably can't see it as detailed that's hardly used for me because I use the inches and you can see this is a little bit a little bit well worn um, but I tend to use my bigger uh, cutting mat when I'm cutting on the table and, and using using you know my rotary cutter this is just for smaller projects 
so it protects your table and they're great because it's got all the measurements on it so if you're cutting a five inch square whilst a five inch square ruler is great and i've got one actually using the five inch square and you can see on this on this um cutting mat the five inch square is actually in bold so if you're cutting a five inch square you can just line it up to this edge and cut your square so they're just perfect and really flexible the main thing i'd say about that is to store it flat so i always put mine under the sofa or under the chair and to go with that mat is uh, of course your rulers so these are really important as well because especially when you're using them alongside your mats so that if you cut in that five inch square you can line your fabric up to this um, edge take your five inches and then line up your rotary ruler uh, your ruler and use your rotary cutter so that is an absolute essential for me and as you can see behind me please leave comments if you want more tutorials on this because i'm going to do more on these the this is my longer ruler which i use more most of the time and then i also love the creative grid rulers so they're good for um more specialized cutting and more more intricate angles and things like that and then lastly we've got my little iron this is my little prim iron which again is well worn because whenever I'm sewing, whenever I switch the sewing machine on, I switch the iron on as well. Um, because the, the, de the detail is, especially if you're making things um, like the half square triangles or quilting or anything especially like that, to get those seams really crisp, um, you need the iron. It also sets the seam. So what that means is when you've, um, when you've done your row of stitches, a line of stitches to then take your fabric stitch together with two rows of two pieces of fabric when you then put that on this is another must-have um i have one of these um a woolen uh ironing, ironing mat so i use these together so i put my fabric which i've sewn together on the on my uh, woolen mat when i sew um iron onto those see that seam it sets those stitches so that means it makes it part of the fabric so the seams are really secure and tight the fabric and the new stitches sort of seal them together so that's called setting the stitches so the iron is good for that and then when you i fold the fabric open so that the seam is open on the wrong side you can either iron those seams open that seam open like this or you can turn it over to the darker side of whichever fabric is darker so that you don't see that seam and then you just iron now when I say iron it's more of a press because especially if you've cut that fabric on the bias if you're cutting fabric on the on the grain it's not too bad with your seams they won't stretch and pull but if you've cut your material on a bias angle then don't just iron it's not like ironing clothes thank goodness um it's pressing so then you would just press this this iron is brilliant as well uh, because it's got a steam function so you can it steams it's, it's just like your, your owner iron and then just press like that so you're not stretching and warping the fabric and then you turn it over to the right side and then just give it that final press and it's just so crisp and makes those seams and edges um really neat especially when you're making something like this bag which with the half square triangles you want the points to be all matched up and really really neat that iron is is a must-have so they're my five essentials i'm just going to talk about a few more nice to haves um in terms of being practical when you're sewing which it's obviously all about and the little things make all the difference don't they uh i use these clips now we're so used to using, and I've used them for years, pins to pin see, uh, pieces of fabric together or if you're sewing up a hem on a skirt or a pair of trousers, you know, I can remember my mum doing this, putting the pins in her mouth and then she'd be on the floor pinning up my brother's hems on, on his trousers with pins. Um, and they used to be, I didn't, I had one in here, oh, I've got one there. They used to be just these very dainty little pins and that's really all you could get. Now, of course, you get the plastic coloured heads on pins, you get the glass head pins that don't melt when you iron them. 
Um, and my favourite pin at the minute is this flat head end one because it, you can just pick it up. So when you're in the middle of your sewing and you've got lots of fabric, you can just literally grab it like that. So I prefer them at the moment and they're quite big as well. And of course they have to be sharp and I'm a bit of a, you know, if it's not, if it's not sharp, I do get rid of them because they have to be sharp so that they're not making too big a hole in your fabric. If they're sharp, they just go in, pop out, and they don't spoil your fabric. You know, spend all that money on really nice fabric. You want nice pins to not damage it at all. But coming back to these clips, they're brilliant. They are just like little bulldog clips, uh, but they're plastic, so they don't damage your fabric. They're not gonna rip it or pull it or put any tension on it. And they're great, especially if you're a quilter, so it can grip, for all the very tiny, it can grip quite a lot of layers. So you've got your top layer, your wadding, then your bottom layer, and it'll just grip them all together for, so that when you put it, your fabric under the machine, it's held together. And then I have a little box like this one, but a small one, that I place just at the back of my machine. This is one of my uh, machines out of my collection. This one's called Sue. Um, and as you can see, she's quite pimped up, this one. Um, and I always put a little tub at the back of the machine, a little tin. So as I'm sewing, I just take the clip off the fabric and then just pop it in there um, so that they're all nicely collected as well at the end. So they are essentials, I think, as, as well as your pins, obviously. Uh, what else have we got? I want to just go back and talk a little bit more about scissors. As you can see, um, I do love my scissors and if I see a nice pair of scissors in a different colour to the one I've already got, then I will I will add it to my collection. I've got a pink pair of these downstairs as well. Um, so they're really nice. They're just colour coordinate. And of course, they've all got different jobs. These are more for embroidery and really close stitches. I think everybody's probably got the traditional stalk scissors. They're in that nice rose gold because they're just pretty and they're very sharp. And they've also got that long, for all their tiny scissors, They've got that nice shape here for your finger and the beak, if you like, is quite long. So they're really sharp as well. It's all about being sharp, isn't it? But there's a couple of particular cutting items. I don't want to call them scissors because that I, that I particularly like. And this is one of them, which is why I didn't say scissors, because these are more like, they're like hedge cutters, aren't they? Um, and they've got a safety catch on them here. So when I take that safety catch off, they spring open, they've got, they're spring loaded if you like. And these are brilliant because they're spring loaded. So with scissors, you know, you're opening them up and closing them. Not that that's a lot of effort, granted, but with these, they stay open. So the only force you're having to put on is to snip. So earlier on I was talking about, you know, especially for round shapes like Maddie's face, when you're cutting into the seam to help it to not pucker when you turn that sewing out, these are brilliant for just getting round the edge and you can just snip, 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 and they're just so quick. Um, not that you want to be quick and speedy with scissors because obviously you've got to think about, you know, you don't want to chip your fingers off or spoil your stitches, especially when you're cutting into the seams, you don't want to go through a stitch, otherwise you're gonna to have to go back over. But they're, they're just really, really, just really useful really nice and easy to use but my i mean i must have said i've got about three pair of favorite scissors now but these are them these are my favorite scissors these are my applique scissors now they're called applique scissors some people call them um a duck build scissor because they've got you know that duck build shape at the end i use these every single day whether i'm hand sewing so if I'm doing some English paper piecing with hexagons, I have these. If I'm sewing a button on, sew a lot of buttons onto things because everything I make has a button on it, use these. If I'm, my sewing machine doesn't have, this is my older machine, my current machine, uh, that's a Singer as well. It doesn't have a thread cutter on it. Um, I wish it did, but I don't like to talk about it in front of the machine, don't want to upset him. Um, but these are brilliant because they're small, but they're, I like the way they sit. They sit on the desk so they're not flat because that's the purpose of them when you use them with applique. So if I, I've got an example of some applique here. So I've applique this letter onto this fabric. I'm making some Easter bunting. So that's what that's my project that I'm doing at the moment. So you can see I've got the letter 
tacked round onto the backing fabric and then I'm going to use these applique scissors, which is, this is a real job, to cut around the edge of that first level, layer of stitching so I can get really tight to the fabric, really, really tight to the stitches so that it cuts the fabric away that I don't need. So that's what they're for, but going back to my sewing machine, I just think because they sit like that, that they're not on the desk as these are, they're just quick to pick up and they're lightweight and I like that shorter end so I can just snip the stitches, stick, snip the underneath and the top um, bobbin thread and the top thread, just snip it off really quickly. And you can also get close to the fabric so it saves you having to go back when you've done your sewing and clip off all those ends. You're sort of doing killing two birds with, a, with one stone as it were. Um, just one more thing I think today that um, is really useful and that's my little glue pen. So it's a little bit like, work, works in the same way that a print stick works for paper or stationery, but this is especially for fabric. So don't use, I've never tried it, but don't use a print stick on fabric because it's not meant for fabric. These um, glue sticks, they're really nice. You, fill, you can refill them, you can buy the cartridges and you just pop it in and it twists up a bit like a lipstick. Um, but it works, it, it's a fabric glue. So when you pop it onto your fabric and glue something down, it's more, it's a temporary stick. It does wash out. Sometimes it dries clear, not always. It can leave a little bit of residue, but I find if you just get a damp cloth, it'll just wipe it off. Um, but that's really good if you're putting a zip into an item. I put a lot of zips into makeup bags. Then I can just run the glue along the edge of the fabric, stick down the, the edge of the zip, use my clips to then clip it together, and that just holds it a bit firmer until I can get, get it to the machine. Um, so that, I would say, is uh, one of my essentials. And also, talking about English paper piecing, when you're, uh, you've got all your little hexagons, I use thin card for my hexagon shapes, um, you've got your fabric, and to rather than basting, using a basting stitch, use your glue stick. Glue all around the six sides, fold your fabric round, I'll do a tutorial on this soon, and then you can, it sticks that fabric down, it's perfect. And then when you've sewn your hexes together, you can just literally unpick it because it's only temporary glue and take your little hexes out and they're not spoiled, they've not got pinholes in and you can keep reusing them for longer. So that's another must have for me. I've got two of those, one upstairs in my sewing room, one downstairs where I sew. So I could talk, as I'm sure you could, about sewing things, sewing essentials, sewing accessories, forever and I could never have enough and when I go to the haberdashery shop you know I oh look at this look at this I look I love it all um but I've just picked out today my essentials which were my rotary cutter my scissors my mat my ruler and the iron my mini iron uh, it's just so much easier to handle than a big iron and just a few a few of my favorite things as I think uh is it Mary Poppins once said hmm no sound of music so anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you see. Subscribing to the channel really helps me out, means I can provide more content. And don't forget to press the bell and then every time I put a YouTube uh, video on, you'll get notified. See you again. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's start there. You need to say like and subscribe, but just do that now. Can you edit that out? Yeah. I quite no, like, no, 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 I no. quite Keep like it, it. Just do like, subscribe before this one. Okay.